Hi, my name is Sid Kelly, and I welcome you to this tape, which is about an extremely interesting study of a very versatile and rather ignored armlock, Wacky Gitami, and its counterpart, Yushiro Wacky Gitami. The last score you just saw from the Connecticut State Championships was a classic example of a Wacky Gitami which began in the standing position and ended on the mat. It was executed by a student of Mr. Sheenus, a Christian Zero from the Stanford Dojo. Several years ago, I researched and developed some armlock training drills and an armlock carter. And it was during this research that I found Wacky Gitami to have such versatility of application that I decided to research it further. From this investigation, I discovered over 70 situations that Wacky Gitami and Yushiro Wacky Gitami could be applied from. And because Wacky Gitami and Yushiro Wacky Gitami epitomizes the enormous depth and breadth that there is to the study of judo, I decided to begin the judo workshop video series with three tapes about this versatile, powerful and practical arm lock. This tape, tape number one, contains wacky guitarmy applications from holding and self-defense situations along with the basic technique. I appreciate that many viewers are well versed with the arm lock wacky guitarmy, but for the sake of completeness, I shall begin by reviewing the basic technique. This definitive study of Wacky Gitami is intended for the experienced judo instructor and student. It has assumed Japanese terminology and references such as bridge and roll escape, hands and knees position, etc. are understood. Wacky Gitami. Wakikitami viewed from Yuki's side. Wakikitami viewed from Yuki's front. Yushiro Wakikitami. Yushiro Waki Katami viewed from Yuki's side. <coughs> Yushiro Waki Katami viewed obliquely from Yuki's side. Key points when applying Waki Katami and Yushiro Waki Katami. One, position of body. The positioning of the body is of paramount importance. Tori's body must be placed as far forward as possible, so Tori's groin is positioned under Yuki's armpit. <coughs> if the body is positioned too far back, away from the armpit, the arm lock cannot effectively be applied. When the position of the body is correct, the arm lock is applied instantaneously. Two, position of the pressure on the arm. Pressure is applied to the arm at a point near Yuki's elbow, between the elbow and shoulder. Tori's side, as indicated, makes contact with this point when applying the arm lock. If pressure is applied on the shoulder, the resultant action will produce an illegal shoulder lock. Three, position of elbow.
The pinky and natural bend of the elbow joint are directly in line with each other. For maximum effectiveness, pressure should be applied on the elbow joint directly opposite the natural bend of the elbow. Although it is usually done by feel, a good guide when applying the arm lock is to pull or push the arm in the direction of Yuki's pinky. When the pinky and natural bend of the elbow is upwards, the pull is upwards towards Tori. When the pinky and natural bend of the elbow is horizontally towards Tori, the pull is horizontally towards Tori. When the pinky and natural bend of the elbow is horizontally away from Tori, the arm is pushed horizontally away from Tori. In this case, pressure is applied against Tori's arm, not against his side. Four, position of hands. To apply maximum force and leverage, both of Tori's hands should grip the far side of Yuki's wrist. Gripping the near side of the wrist restricts the hugging action that is required. In some cases, execution of the arm lock could be obstructed because the movement of Tori's hands will be blocked by Tori's chest. Pulling on the sleeve is ineffective because holding the sleeve gives full control of Yuki's arm and also leverage is reduced because holding the sleeve is closer to the elbow than the wrist grip. Applying pressure close to the elbow decreases leverage. Best results are obtained with two hands, one on top of the other positioned and pulling on the far side of the wrist at a maximum distance from the elbow. Five, posture. A large triangular posture is the most stable and the best for adapting to the forever changing circumstances that accompany combative situations. A small triangular posture is unstable, admittedly shown here exaggerated, and difficult to change position from. Preconditions required to apply the arm locks Wacky Kitami and Yushiro Wacky Kitami. From study and research, it was found that to apply a Wacky Kitami, four preconditions have to be present. In certain cases, a fifth precondition, motion, is necessary. The ease and difficulty of obtaining these preconditions varies with each application. These preconditions will now be explained. 1. Yuki must be in a frontal position or be able to be brought to a frontal position. 2. Because Yuki is in the hands and knees position, the frontal position already exists. There is no difficulty with this precondition. In this case, 
bringing Yuki to a frontal position requires a lot of skill. This is a difficult precondition for Tori to obtain. Two, Tori must be able to manoeuvre himself into the required position. Because Tori has no restrictions imposed upon him by Yuki, it is easy for him to manoeuvre. In this example, Tori's ability to manoeuvre is very difficult. The preconditioning of manoeuvring requires a lot of skill in this case. Three, Tori must be able to enter his hand, arm or leg between Yuki's arm and body. Here the applications reverse roles. In this application, the precondition of entering the arm is easy. In this case, for Tori to enter his arm between Yuki's body and arm is the most difficult precondition. Four, Tori must be able to extend Yuki's arm. After Tori has overcome the difficult preconditioning of manoeuvring, the preconditioning of straightening the arm already exists. After Tori has overcome the difficult precondition of entering his arm, the difficult precondition of straightening the arm remains. Five. In some cases, Yuki must be in motion. Here we have an example which contains three easy preconditions. One entering the arm, two straightening the arm, and three manoeuvring. But unless there is movement, the preconditioning of getting Yuki into a frontal position would be very difficult, if not impossible. Recapitulating the preconditions for Wacky Gatami. Yuki must be in a frontal position or be able to be brought to a frontal position. Tori must be able to manoeuvre himself into the required position. Tori must be able to enter his hand, arm or leg between Yuki's arm and body. Tori must be able to extend Yuki's arm. In some cases, Yuki must be in motion. These five preconditions will be referred to during instruction on this tape. With an understanding of these preconditions, it is simple to determine whether a wacky katami is possible or not from any given situation. After determining what the preconditions are for a specific technique, especially in Neiwaza, the interested instructor or student will be able to decipher their own new techniques. Wakikitami and Yushiro Wakikitami applications occurring from holding situations.
we begin by examining applications for wacky katami and yushiro wacky katami that occur from attacking and escaping actions from the hold hon kazakatami the basic scarf hold Yuki applies a bridge and roll escape. As Yuki rolls Tori over, Yuki places himself in a frontal position with his arm outstretched. At the correct moment, Tori turns and applies a Yushiro Waki Katami. Yuki applies an uphill escape. This opportunity occurs when Yuki places his free arm on Tori's body as he turns to escape. At the correct moment, Tori switches control from Yuki's held arm and turns and applies Yushiro Waki Katami on Yuki's free arm. Tori turns away before the hold is applied. In this application, 
Tori must seize the opportunity before Yuki applies the hold. Turning away from Yuki, Tori takes control of Yuki's arm. Maintaining control of Yuki's arm throughout the turn, Tori ends up applying a Yushiro Waki Katami. Tori applies a bridge and roll escape. As Tori applies a bridge and roll escape, Yuki is turned over to a frontal position. Before Yuki brings his right arm in to defend himself, Tori jumps over Yuki's body and applies Yushiro Waki Katami. Tori applies an uphill escape. As Yuki holds on trying to save the hold, he turns himself onto a frontal position with an outstretched arm.
With the two preconditions of frontal position and outstretched arm existing, it is easy for Tori to apply wacky katami. Applications are now shown from actions arising from the hold Kazuri Kazakatami, the modified scarf hold. Attempting to escape, Yuki turns towards Tori. Tori first resists Yuki's efforts to escape before applying Wacky Gitami. The principle of resistance and reaction is demonstrated for this hold. Momentarily, Yuki's movements are uncontrolled and he rolls over onto his front. When Tori feels the moment is correct, he ceases to resist and uses Yuki's reaction to roll him over and extend the arm and apply Wacky Katami. As Yuki enters for the hold, Tori slips under Yuki's arm. Of the 43 Neiwaza applications, this is the most difficult to execute. It is the preconditioning of maneuvering that makes this application difficult. Before Yuki applies the hold, and while Yuki's weight is still on his outstretched arm, Tori slips his arm inside, 
breaks Yuki's balance, slides his body downwards while turning and applies Yushiro Waki Katami. Practicing this difficult but interesting application will improve maneuverability for other less difficult wakikatami and Yushiro wakikatami applications. If, after sliding his body downwards, Tori turns towards Yuki instead of away, as in the previous example, the resultant arm lock is Waki Katami instead of Yushiro Waki Katami. Applications are now shown from actions arising from the hold Kata Katami, shoulder hold. As Tori attempts the hold, Yuki turns away. Agility is the key word for this application. Tori must be able to move around Yuki's head and apply Yushiro Wakigatami before Yuki can withdraw his arm to defend against the arm lock. As Yuki enters for the hold, Tori rolls backwards. Before the hold is too effective, Tori rolls over backwards and applies Yushiro Waki Katami.
To assist the backward roll and resist the hold, Tori pushes his upper arm onto the side of Yuki's neck. To increase the pushing force, Tori holds both hands together and pushes against Yuki's neck, utilizing the power of both arms. An application will now be shown from the hold Kazuri Yoko Shiho Gatami, the modified side four quarters hold. Yuki attempts to grab Tori's belt for a bridge and roll escape. For this application to succeed, Tori must control Yuki's arm before Yuki takes hold of Tori's belt. At the right moment, Tori turns and brings Yuki onto his front and applies Wacky Gitami. An application will now be shown from the hold Tate Shiho Gatami, the straight four quarters hold. Yuki attempts to escape by turning. Tori first resists Yuki's efforts to escape before applying Wacky Katami. The principle of resistance and reaction is demonstrated for this hold. Momentarily, Yuki's movements are uncontrolled and he rolls over onto his front. The difficulty with this application is maneuvering. Tori at the right moment must change from a straddled 
to a Kazakatami type position to apply Wacky Katami. An application will now be shown from the hold Yushiro Kazakatami, the reverse scarf hold. Yuki attempts to escape by turning towards Tori. Tori first resists Yuki's efforts to escape before applying Yushiro Waki Katami. The principle of resistance and reaction is demonstrated for this hold. Momentarily, Yuki's movements are uncontrolled and he rolls over onto his front. Using the principle of resistance and reaction, Tori applies Yushiro Waki Gitami. The final application in the Asayakami Waza section is from the hold Kamishiho Gatami, the upper four quarters hold. Yuki attempts to escape by turning towards Tori. Tori first resists Yuki's efforts to escape before applying Yushiro Waki Gatami. The principle of resistance and reaction is demonstrated for this hold. Momentarily, Yuki's movements are uncontrolled and he rolls over onto his front. Again, Tori resists Yuki's escaping actions, then releases and applies Yushiro Waki Gatami.
self-defense applications with Wacky Katami and Yushiro Wacky Katami. Whenever you practice a self-defense application, you must be very, very careful, as this is what could happen. Self-defense is probably the most neglected area of judo study. Because of this, and because many beginners join judo with a curiosity related to self-defense, this section has been included for the interested instructor and student. Tori defends against a rear strangle. Tori first defends his attack neck by tucking his chin in. Next he pulls down on Yuki's attacking arm. Stuns Yuki with an elbow strike to the ribs. Turns while controlling Yuki's arm. takes Yuki to the ground and applies Yushiro Waki Gatami. Tori defends against a frontal grip. Tori first stuns Yuki by flicking his fingers into Yuki's eyes. Then he takes him to the ground and applies Wacky Katami. Again, Tori defends against a frontal grip. Tori first stuns Yuki with an uppercut punch. Then using a wrist lock, takes Yuki to the ground to apply Yushiro Waki Gatami. Tori defends against a frontal strangle.
Corey breaks the strangle by swinging his arm over. He then strikes Yuki on the chin with his elbow and takes him to the ground to apply wacky gatami. Tori defends a strike to the head. Tori blocks the strike, throws Yuki with a Sotagari and applies Yushiro Wacky Gatami. Instead of gripping the jack before Yuki is pushed over, Tori defends against hair grabbing. Tori first breaks the grip with a wrist lock, then backs away taking Yuki down and applying a wacky katami. Tori defends against wrist grabbing. Tori escapes the grip by pulling his right wrist between Yuki's thumb and index finger. Then he strikes the side of Yuki's head. Takes him down to the ground. And applies wacky katami. Tori defends against a rear bear hug. Tori stuns and breaks the bear hug grip with his sliding kick to the ankle. Then controlling Yuki's arm, he turns and takes Yuki down to the ground and applies Yushiro Wacky Katami. I hope you found the information on this tape informative, educational, thought-provoking, and even stimulating. 
I also hope that you'll experiment in your judo practice and try some of the techniques that are new to you. I close now with a short preview from the other tapes and wish you good luck, good health and joyful practicing in your judo journey.